Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services, AWS reInvent. This is their big, I guess, end user, developer conference of the year. Uh, we, it's our second year in a row. We're excited to exclusively broadcast live from the ground floor with theCUBE. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier uh, with SiliconANGLE. My co-host, Stu Miniman from wikibon.org. Our next guest is, is Teresa Carlson, Vice President of Worldwide Public Sector Business at AWS. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, um, happy to be here. Tech athlete, as we say, we love having you on. And certainly, um, I wish I could go back and replay what we did last yeah. year because you know, we were pretty high on this whole government sector business. And then this yeah. year, just boom. Yeah. CIA, you win the IBM deal. Yep. Now, and then here at this show, obviously the government's clearly the consumption yes. is a winning formula. So give us, how do you feel about this year? Give us you know, your, your personal take. I feel great about this year. I can't tell you, it's really been a phenomenal year for public sector. Uh, you know, we announced today our government business has grown, our education business has grown, the not-for-profit, and we're starting to see a lot more procurements that just plainly call out cloud computing. And if you look at those requirements, those requirements are really Amazon Web Services. And the adoption has grown significantly since we last talked, so pretty excited. So this CIA thing, which has been written about, so I don't really want to go too much in the weeds on the contract, uh, and certainly the IBM thing, but it's, it's the first of its kind kind of opportunity for you guys in, a, in both, one, government, also in the consumption side. Yes. So is there things that have come out of that that surprised you, and what would you share with the audience as the real walkaway game changer for your business? The real walk away game changer, I think, for our business is the fact that it was the Central Intelligence Agency that chose Amazon Web Services and uh, made a decision that cloud computing was the model of choice for them. And in fact, we built that region um, within schedule, on time, we've launched it, and uh, now I think the customer you know, is, a happy, is a happy customer. But the most important thing is it's a game changer for the traditional way that government actually consumes and delivers IT services for the mission. And one of the things that we've always said here at Amazon Web Services is you know, we want them to have more money for the mission and be able to do a lot more projects. And uh, this actually really supports that whole value proposition, which is better, cheaper, faster with security by design. Okay, so take me through um, what you guys are actually offering because I, we've got a lot of debate going on on CrowdChat that we have built on Amazon, by the way. Um, our, new, our new product, I have to get the plug in there. Stu knows I always get the plug in for CrowdChat. Um, but really more about what are you guys offering? Because there's some scuttlebutt on CrowdChat that it's a private cloud. And so it's not, a, not real Amazon, it's the private cloud. Is that true or is it just a custom version of Amazon with, with what components? Yeah. So it, is it a private cloud? Uh, no, it's really a custom version. They, in fact, their procurement's you know, fairly public. And in fact, they wanted, that was one of their key tenets, was a commercial cloud model. So they wanted, they didn't want anything uh, spectacular or special because they had already evaluated what Amazon Web Services offered. So it's a commercial cloud region. Um, the, the big difference with it is obviously it has to meet their bar on security, which is different, but it's also what we call air gapped which it's, you know, it's within their network, within their boundaries, but it really, it's an Amazon Web Services region. Yeah, Teresa, so can you speak to us, since the CIA deal, what has that done to the, your government business? And I'm also curious, from a security standpoint, has this had ripples just across Amazon's entire business? It, it really has, you know, I think a lot of people really sort of uh, woke up and said, wow, we have the intelligence community really looking at cloud, and it's, if they say that it's secure and it's a game changer for them, why shouldn't we really be looking at cloud? So uh, it's definitely supported our business and I think the growth of the business globally for public sector, but the enterprise uh, probably has been the most, you know, commercial enterprise area has probably been the, 
biggest growth as a result of this because a lot of large enterprises were evaluating cloud already and said, well, you know, hold on. Again, if they can do it, why shouldn't we be out there aggressively evaluating and taking advantage of it? And just a point of that is what we really find, it's not that they weren't interested prior to this, it, it really, it's speeding up their ability to get out there and write a nice procurement so they can actually get there faster. Right, so can you also explain to us a little bit about the AWS marketplace for the intelligence community and how that builds into your government offerings? Sure, so um, I don't know how familiar you are with their uh, commercial AWS marketplace. Well this will be exactly, again, the same thing for the intelligence community and uh, obviously, you know, for them to go big and utilize these tools, they'll have to go through some additional vetting. But here's the game changer. The game changer is this provides unlimited innovation for the intelligence community. They're going to be able to try and evaluate tools that they never had access to. And they have you know, a, a varied and large mission. And many times, um, a lot of the tools they've used, they've used for a long time, and they're very hungry to have some more innovative kind of tools that they can evaluate and take advantage of. So I think for the short term and the long term, it's really going to provide quick access to innovation that they can um, start using immediately. So, so Teresa, what's it been like working with the government? Because you talk about cutting costs and driving innovation. Those are two things that we don't hear much from our government these days. Yeah, well, so I've been working with government for, you know, for a long time. And I, I suppose I'm, I'm a big believer that government should have the same opportunity as any other company to do things better, cheaper, and faster um, with that security. And Amazon Web Services offers that. And the big, the change that we're seeing is that um, actually integrators and partners see that they can do more projects, more like more projects rapidly versus one project for a long time. And that's what cloud's really getting to. Okay, so let me get this right. So I, the intelligent community, or as you call IC, that's your baby, right? Well, I love all my customers. But Fed, <laughs> last year, I think, did we talk about FedRAMP? That's that part of it, is it a different yeah. group, or is it similar? I would love to talk about this. So security and compliance. And FedRAMP was the first security and, comp and compliance regime and this was started in the U.S. government. As a result of that, there's been instantiations other places around the world like IRAP in Australia, MTCS in uh, Singapore, and there's other countries and groups starting to pick these up. We've met all of, if they're out there, we've, we're meeting them. However, the interesting thing about the U.S. government is after FedRAMP, then DOD came out with some, some of their own tools, some of their own controls, and we met those controls, level one through five, and then we met an additional bar with the intelligence community. So, so far we're doing a pretty good job meeting yeah. all the security and compliance don't regimes. Get, don't get too comfortable because competition's coming after you, I'm sure, because you guys are really doing well. Congratulations there. But I got to ask you, because Stu and I with Dave Vellante were on a production meeting before we kicked off theCUBE a couple days ago, and we were talking about your interview last year and what, yeah. what was coming out this, this year. And we kind of said to ourselves, we were kind of scratching our heads saying, this doesn't make any sense. Why would the government move faster than, say, enterprises? So, <laughs> I mean, the CIA and the intelligence community is a massive shift in behavior, one, as an organization, as a community, and two, they have kind of like a hardcore base of customers, the voters. Right, So yeah. talk about the dynamic, and how did that play out? Was that an, uh, an enabler? Was it just a, uh, and, and, and do they all buy in this marketplace? Can they all buy from each other? So, it, it's, it's, it's really kind of like, Pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, this this is a buying vehicle for the community. So it's not just the Central Intelligence Agency, but they all have access to this. So I think that's, you know, again, that's pretty cool. So they have access to this. But in addition to that, there's been a lot more, you know, not just with this customer, but every cult customer. We see there's a culture shift that's got to take place, the training, the education. How do you actually build an application in the cloud? How do you move an application? And then how, you, how do you optimize it? And we're going through that with them and quite frankly, every other customer that we have in public sector. So what was it like? Give us some insight. Come on, share some, some color around the conversations. Were they just like, look at we have a clean sheet of paper. We know we got a lot of baggage. The government websites are crashing. I know you guys had some role in helping that. If you can share that. I mean, obviously, you know, the whole, how much the healthcare.gov site, the Obamacare sites. I mean, the government really is not 
that strong on IT, but they got a lot of requirements. So was it like, okay, we want to build from scratch? Well, um, the, the traditional model of IT and government is to do everything from scratch. I mean, the traditional model is like, okay, let's buy every server, let's procure it, let's wait, let's you know, design, configure, wait some more, build some more, see if it works. And what they over provision they're buying, they spend way too much. That way, they, they way over provision, way over provision. That that's been very common. And with this, what's happening is they are seeing that you can try things, fail fast, recover fast, and really take those learnings and move them into the next project. So, so the principles that you hear Amazon Web Services talk about are really picking up in the government. And security must have been a concern. So Always. we heard about the key, uh, the encryption stuff, the keys today, you know, keys to the kingdom, if you will, security. What did you have to go through on that piece? I mean, obviously it's an intelligence community, so they must have done their due diligence. Well, what I'll say about that, obviously, yes, they did their due diligence, but also, just if you keep in mind, governments are have a rigorous model even if it's not in the cloud, they do have a very rigorous model about how they review and look at security. And cloud, because it's so new, this is this whole part of FedRAMP, we had to start from scratch and build these controls and work back and forth with government. And it was a lot of give and take and, and really um, them sharing with us their concerns and us sharing with them how cloud works and operates. So you're seeing a fundamental shift around how security is both understood and delivered. And of course, fundamentally, we believe, and we see it from our customers, they yeah. tell us they feel more secure with Amazon well, Web the, Services. The question that comes up from this, this, the you know, taxpayers like myself is this one, is this, mar is this our government doing this? That sounds innovative. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not joking aside, it sounds innovative, it's not, not usually the government. And two, the other one is, how do they figure out the cost downstream because the perception from the outside is, is that government gets a big bag of money, they protect it, they hoard it, then they spend yeah. it, or probably overspend it, and then go back to the well and get some more cash. So were they worried about some sort of SLA cost? Is that built into the contract? How did they deal with that kind of conversation? Well, there's actually, there's no reason why governments can't uh, procure on-demand OPEX versus CAPEX. There's, it, Traditional IT has trained government really well to buy CapEx versus OpEx. So what we're going back and doing and saying, look, um, dollar for dollar you're going to get a lot more with cloud. And in fact, for the first time in the budget this year, their, President Obama, they encourage in the 2015 budget for cloud or utility computing to be utilized within the budget. So what you're seeing now is more of a shift where uh, agencies are picking up and writing procurements for on demand. Now, one of the things, it's experience. So experience is the most important thing because the experience of how much they will use, when will they use it, when do they need more, because like you said, they're used to over-provisioning. So now it's about training them to be a little bit more, thinking more um, about how, how much they can deliver with the dollars they have, how much more they can deliver. But they're getting there. I mean, the, believe me, it's really, you know, it, it's it's not where it should be, but it's moving so much more rapidly than we spoke last year. Okay, so I got to ask you the personal question, which is, what's different this year from last year? What has changed in your life, and not personal, personal, in business, personal? Like, like what surprised you this year? And obviously, the, the intelligence community is a great win. Um, the fact that you wrote that in, that's a great business. It's good to. Yeah. That's going to have a lot of impact to the, you know, how people do things. But what what surprised you out there that it was that you didn't expect that would that happen this year? Well, you know, I run global, and I think for me the big surprise is going around the world and talking to my customers. I love it, and Asia is so progressive. I was just at the Smart Nation conference in Singapore, and they want to be the first Smart Nation, and cloud plays a huge role in that. Australia. Describe Smart Nation, what so, does that mean? So Smart Nation is they want to be a paperless, very connected nation with lots of uh, you know, internet of thing points to connect their citizens, to provide information that really um, gets to the heart of any issue fast. And the other part of that, uh, John, that I think is really interesting is they're trying to enable that for their regional partners because as you know, Singapore itself is a fairly small nation, very powerful but small, and they have a lot of ports and shipping and finance, and they are very open when it comes to regional partnerships. So as a part of this, they're actually training um, 100 plus partners on cloud. 
So they want to get there. So, you know, it's exciting to see what our customers are doing and how it's changing. Even the people they hire, they're looking to have more cloud-based skills within government. So that's changing. You know, the way education is starting to deliver in the classroom, we have a lot of work to do, but just the momentum where people feel excited about what IT can deliver for the mission, for education, changing the world, I mean, it is, you know, it, it's it's pretty cool. You're in a great spot. I got to say, it's really fun to watch you guys and be close to you guys. We've been covering Amazon since it launched. Really, um, and been, I've been a fan. We're a customer of Amazon. We um, we use the service that, as developers, so we love it. Um, but I got to ask you, when you're sitting around the room, you know, having a dinner with Andy Chassy, Jeff Bezos, <laughs> and the team, the core team at Amazon. We work all the time. We don't need know, dinner. You, you work through. <laughs> have a working dinner. Um, when you say we have Andy, right? Do you guys actually have your pinch me moments where you say, you know, we're really, we're kicking ass here. I mean, you have, do you guys sit back and reflect? Not in a way to get cocky, but like in a way to say, you know, pinch me, is this really happening? I think we are all, all of us are in awe at where we are, but I think that we also never feel that we're doing enough. Because if you looked at the slide today that Andy showed on stage, the innovation curve at the services we're launching, Obviously you can see by the number of services that we're launching in 2014 that we just continue to see all these amazing opportunities to do more. So while we're, of, yeah, of course, yes, we're excited, we love our customers. I think we're constantly being sort of self-critical of what do we need to do next? What can we do better? What are our customers asking from us? And you know, quite frankly, John, I think that's the best part about what we do at Amazon Web Services is the true customer obsession of delivering on these features and, and services that are coming as, as a result of our customers. And you're global too, you mentioned that earlier. Having a global footprint and having companies that could go global, we heard Intuit on stage say, we went global in two months. Yeah. That's pretty impressive, so that's cool. Um, I guess the final kind of question I'm curious about is, um, you know, every company has a unique DNA, you yeah. know, Moore's Law for Intel, um, cadence of Moore's Law, they marched that, Pat Gelsinger was talking about, talks about all the time on theCUBE. What is the cadence of, what's the Amazon, the Amazon Web Services Law? What, what's, what's, the, what's the core DNA? There's always that one unique thing. What is it? Um, I don't know that I could say one thing, but the people are so passionate about our leadership principles, and they're not just words. So if I could maybe encapsulate that, they're not just words, it's something that we live by. And if you look at all those principles and you start with customer obsession, you work down from there. Um, and Andy talked about a little bit today, the working backwards process for us. We begin with the end, was what, what would our customers want? What would they be asking for? And, it's, and we're, um, we want to hear honest and open feedback about what's working and what's not working so we can literally make that a better experience. And we don't, we don't take any of those items that come back to us as uh, we don't want to hear it. We're like, great, give us more feedback and let us iterate and improve what we're doing on that. So really I think it encapsulates how we operate our leadership principles. And again, just the core of that is if you begin with the customer, I think, things happen for the right reasons. And you guys are really good at packaging, kind of that retail culture. All right, so we're getting the hook here, but I want to I um, ask you, what's next for you this year? What's on the, what are we going to be talking about next year? What uh, government well, agency, global phenomenon yeah. deal are you going to do? So next year, what I want to be able to come back and talk to you about, we just won the state of Texas cloud procurement, which is very large and Texas and Oklahoma can buy, plus many others. I, I want to tell you a lot more about that. I also want to talk to you next year about global, what we're doing in a lot of the countries, because it is pretty cool, and I actually think in the U.S., they can learn a lot from what other countries are doing. And, it's, and again, I love just seeing how they are taking cloud to the next level. So I want to share some more of those with I you mean, next year. I mean, Internet of Things is people yeah. and, and computers and other things, so yes. like that's connected society. Very it's really powerful. I think you're in a really unique policy and social change is really rapid. Yeah, it is. And the ability to uh, take data and analyze it and these open data sets that are game changing now that you can open up genomics, weather, um, you know, science space. They're open and we have young researchers, educators that can use these and make new discoveries. And that wasn't possible almost just like six years ago. Think of how that's changed 
so much more possible now. People are reinventing the way they do business, hence the, the show reInvent. This is theCUBE, we're extracting the signal from the noise. Teresa, I'll give you the final word. If you could put a bumper sticker on this show this year, what would it say? What's the theme of this event? Um, this year, definitely much more enterprise. Much more enterprise. Last year, I saw a flavor of it, but definitely this year. We have a huge executive summit. You were at, our, you were at the analyst, we, the breakfast session this morning. Very much enterprise dialogue. And that's, that's very much changed. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank you both for being here with us at AWS and helping us sort of promote and educate everyone about what is happening here. So I want to thank you all as well. Teresa, thank you. We are really honored to exclusively cover it. Thanks for the space and shout out to Mary Camarad and Andy Jass and the team. It's our honor. It's fun to watch and, and document history yeah. in the making. So we are live here. This is theCUBE, it's what we do. We extract the signal from the noise and share that with you. Um, I want to thank all the sponsors out there, Amazon and, and uh, Trend Micro, for supporting our, our passion, our vision of bringing all the data to you here live. We'll be right back with our next guest after the short break. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back.